Hello, this is Tom from Never Center. In this video, I'm going to show you the new features coming uh, in Milo 2021.2. Um, and the first one that I'll, we'll just jump right in. The first that I'll show is uh, that we've improved the rendering quality quite a bit. So uh, we enabled temporal anti-aliasing in Unreal Engine, which will make all of your edges now look much smoother. Um, and it's the way temporal anti-aliasing works, it's probably hard to see in this video, but as you move it, um, you might see some jaggies as you would call them. But then after uh, you hold still for a few seconds and stop moving the camera, then it uh, progressively smooths out the jaggies and makes really nice, um, crisp, non-jaggy edges. Um, and um, that applies also to the rendering when you save this out as a screenshot or whatever, um, that it will do that anti-aliasing also. Also in Milo 2021.2, we've just uh, generally improved the ray tracing. Um, so when I turn this on, you can see. Um, so part, part of this just always looks better with the anti-aliasing. Um, a lot of the ray tracing sort of... Uh, jaggies and, and noise in the shadows is now much, much better. Um, but also just tweaking the quality settings. One of the things you can see is like reflections we've made better. So um, you can see reflections like this green of this vase over here and this step on the stair. And uh, the scene is accurately, pretty accurately drawn in the reflection of, of this um, blue vase. There's a black bunny over there. Don't ask me why. Um, Anyway, so um, we think you'll see uh, quite a bit of improvement in the quality of your ray tracing renders. You'll notice that there's a new this new settings menu. So a uh, previous version of Milo had the ray tracing button out here. Here you can toggle it on in here. Um, and you'll see a couple of other settings. One of these is pixel scale. So um, with Milo 2021.2, We've updated it uh, with better support for high DPI displays. And so um, in previous versions of Milo, it was always running a little bit below full screen resolution if you had a high DPI display. And so um, the viewport was just at a lower resolution, which was good for frame rate, but um, sometimes you want to see it more sharp. But what we've done now is, um, so we've upped, upped the resolution, so all the icons and everything will look a little bit sharper and uh, higher res um, and in general probably the interface will take up less screen space than it has in your previous versions but what we've done is if you want to um, improve your frame rate you can adjust this pixel scale so if I do like 50% then it will half the resolution width and height um, of this while it's rendering so you notice uh, when I had turned ray tracing on before um, it was going at a lower frame rate, but when I turn that pixel scale down, then the ray tracing becomes more interactive. This is just a, uh, a GeForce 3060, so nothing special on this, but um, ray tracing support. Um, but you can see if I put this to 100, so that it's rendering at full resolution, and then I move it, it's quite slow with the ray tracing turned on. but. Um, you can just sort of find the sweet spot for what you're working with. Um, 50 is good for ray tracing. Often 75 is a nice sort of medium one um, for me, I find. And it gives you, um, you know, again, depending on the resolution of your display, it can be a nice medium ground and give you about twice the frame rate as at 100%. Um, so that's that setting. Uh, there's also now a field of view adjustment. And this is just uh, to make your camera more wide angle. This is degrees. It's using the, the horizontal um, bounds of the window as the measurement for this. So um, if you want to, for example, have a just sort of a tall, skinny window, um, you might choose a narrower field of view. Um, that could be handy. So we've got this same model open in silo over here. And so uh, if you're doing modeling in Silo and you want to have it update live in Milo, it can be neat to have this. And maybe uh, you can hit the space bar to turn off the interface. So this guy's just standing here without that interface. Um, and then um, 
these aspect ratio bars. So these are set according to the resolution of the export screenshot. So this export screenshot is set to square, 1200 by 1200. So you can see as I change the window dimensions, the aspect bars sort of show where it will get cropped when you export an image. But if you're not doing image exporting, it can be handy to not have those shown. So it just feels more open. So that's what that does. And then ray tracing, obviously that's where you toggle ray tracing on and off if your graphics card supports it. Um, now one other cool feature uh, in this update, in addition to the better looking display, the much improved renders, um, we've added a new live spin feature. So let me, um, let me recenter the view rotation so it's about the origin. Now, we've always had uh, export turntable GIFs where you can set the how long, how many seconds you want your turntable to be in the frames per second and whatnot resolution. But we've added this button called Live Spin. So if I click this, it'll just start spinning my model in the viewport. And it'll just keep going like this um, until I click back in here or do something. So I can actually like change the light while I'm doing this. Um, let's go back to studio lighting for this guy. There we go. Um, and this can be a really fun thing because again, if you're over here in silo and you're like, oh, I want to edit this guy maybe like, you know, make his arm up or something, probably you're doing something a little bit more interesting than that. Then what will happen is it will live update in Milo, uh, automatically while it's still spinning and let you sort of see that change whatever changes you do, whether it be materials or models or whatever, uh, with Milo's nice rendering. Um, so maybe this is better zoomed out or something. Let me make it a little bit taller. Start it live spinning again and disable the interface. Whoops. There we go. Anyway, um, that can be kind of a neat thing to have going on while you're modeling. And uh, then you don't have to export it for the turntable, uh, though you still can, obviously. Um, <clears throat> now let me just talk about a few of the other things that are in this uh, version. One is that the, the window size will be saved between sessions. It was kind of annoying before because it would always start up at the same resolution. Um, but this will remember this. So if I have this tall, skinny window over here and I close it and open it again, it will remember that, which is great. Um, and some other settings like ray tracing are now remembered between sessions. Uh, that wasn't remembered between sessions before. Um, there are some bug fixes, including a crashing bug, uh, that would on certain models with multiple materials when ray tracing was enabled, that they would crash would fix that. Um, another thing is just that the lighting has been more normalized between different backgrounds. So when I've got this light in this, um, I'm in the color room background. When I changed to sky previously, it was a very big difference. Uh, this looked a lot less saturated and the lighting was much more intense, but we've sort of regularized that. Um, we can't make it look exactly the same because this, um, this sky background is using Unreal's tone mapping, which basically changes all the colors to make sure you're not blowing out any highlights. So anyway, uh, they don't look exactly the same between those two, but they look much more similar than they used to. Okay, what I've shown you so far is the new things coming in Milo 2021.2, but I'd like to also give you a sneak peek at a few things coming in 2021.3. Um, these features we just didn't quite get done in time, but they'll be coming on the next release. Um, and these are pretty cool. So um, there's a couple new rendering features. Uh, one is to show wireframes. So uh, you can see just toggling that on, um, it shows the, so you can see the polygon wireframes. And this can make some really cool renders with the nice high quality lighting and everything, especially if you turn ray tracing on. Um, so that's one of them. Then another one is depth of field. So this will give you the, uh, the background blur. So you can see, um, so the, the, the focus is based on the center of your rotation where you click. 
So if I click in the center of the rotation there, that will stay in focus regardless of where I zoom. And then you can easily sort of click between things to put different parts in focus. And um, as you can see with the, with the wireframes and the depth of field, this uh, brings kind of a whole other level of uh, cool things you can do with this. And with the depth of field, you can just adjust the strength. So if you want it kind of crazy, turn it up. Um, and then it will make blurry things much blurrier. Um, so anyway, uh, those are coming soon. Not in 2021.2, but in 2021.3. But this is a little preview, and we'll get those these uh, features wrapped up um, and then get that out to you as soon as we can. Thanks.